Welcome, welcome everybody. Happy February 21st. I'm Kyleen. I am your, <laughs> I was thinking local neighborhood, like the Spider-Man thing, your, <laughs> your friendly neighborhood. Um, I'm your friendly neighborhood sexual betrayal trauma coach, if that isn't a mouthful. Uh, and I am super excited today for another Recover You interview and to have my good friend Kate Vasquez on here to talk about what she does as a practitioner and um, and her new program working with, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things that I talk about, subconscious mind, which is so important. I'm finding it as like literally everything in recovery, um, limiting beliefs, all these really cool things, um, and affirmation which I'm really excited about because uh, it's one of those uh, love it or hate it type things. And I think we're going to figure out a, a way to make it good for everybody. So that's exciting. So let me introduce you really quickly. Kate is a functional medicine and energy practitioner, founder of Radiant by Design, author of the book Estrogen is a Bitch, which I always love that title. I thought that was so great. <laughs> and creator of Already Enough. She left her career as a physician assistant in Western medicine to holistically overcome migraines, anxiety, gut issues, and hormonal imbalances in her body. Blending functional medicine energy work, human design, and emotional intelligence. She offers a unique approach that cultivates a deeper understanding of the mind and body. She helps women overcome imbalances in their body, reconnect to their own energy, and embody their true radiance to live a life they love. Who doesn't love that? That sounds, oh, that sounds amazing. Also, yes, you are focusing more on human design, which I'm so excited about. Um, I, it was so funny because, um, sorry, I'm going to go off on like a short little tangent about human design here. Yes, but I, I literally was talking to um, my, my parents the other day. I was like, do you know what city you were born in and what time you were born in? And like your birth certificate. So my um, my mom sent me – or she she texted like uh, my aunt to ask my grandma what time my dad was born <laughs> because they had sent me their birth certificates. And like yeah. back then, I guess they didn't put the time on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, my grandma remembered when my dad was born. So I put it in and I was like, oh, this is so fascinating. And then my dad was like, what did you learn about me? <laughs> he, he was so curious. He did have a question. He's like, who created this? And I was like, dad, Jesus created it. Humans just figured it out. <laughs> so I love that. I love that answer so much. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cause there's the, there's the nervousness right around like, well, it's like astrology or whatever when yeah. you're finding out like your birth chart. But I have, I don't know. I very much view it as like, this is the way the world works. Like it, it is a thing Listen. and we should, we should figure it out. And, um, also I have found it to be incredibly accurate and helpful yeah. to learn about, um, you know, how like in, in business, like how should you work or, um, in relationships or just like even with your personality, like if you're living in your design and you read your human design, you're going to align with it so much. But yeah. if you're li if you're living against it and you read it, you're going to be like, that's not me. But what you might relate to is you're not self-emotion, which yeah. – yeah, so it's fascinating. Super cool. I'm so glad you're bringing <laughs> that in because I think it helps people a lot. Oh, absolutely. It's – it's yeah, I've, I've been the same like asking all my family and friends – yeah, their, their birth time and place just to figure out their design. Because once you understand how someone's designed, you can really connect with them on such a deeper level. And that's what I'm adding in working with my clients. And I realize like it's taking functional medicine to a whole nother level. You know, mm -hmm. I, I love functional medicine where you get to the root cause, but I find that it was still superficial because it's like, yeah, you can sit there and work on dietary changes and take di different supplements and do yoga meditation. But until we do the deeper work to really, one, uncover all those beliefs and conditioning, but also learn about who we really are and how we're designed and step into that, we're still going to have a lot of the issues. And I would yeah. see that time and time again with my clients. We would go and they'll make changes and supplements. Life would happen. And then everything would come back. And then there's, I can't do this anymore. I'm overwhelmed, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, let's work on the inner, the inner stuff that's going on. But now... I'm recognizing how I do things is not necessarily how another person is going to do things. <laughs> yes. So isn't that so eye opening? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now I can really serve each client even better because now I know, okay, this is like if they were to add in dietary changes, this is how it should be done and not necessarily the way I would do it. So it's, it's, it's so eye, eye opening. Um, pause just for a second. Do you happen to have headphones? Cause there's a little bit of, um, so, some feedback going on. You know what? Oh shoot. I 
think my headphones are out there. That's okay. Um, well, I was going to say with the digestion, I was looking at it the other day um, and I was like, oh, mine is um, sound, which probably means like, like for me, I think it would be music. And yeah. um, I, I, so then I was like, let me check Patrick's because that would be really bad if his was silence. <laughs> and it's not, it's not, it's light. So I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like we can sit in the light and listen to music. That works for me. So that's fascinating to me. <laughs> Yeah, I have a direct digestion. So yeah, I need to eat during the day. And and I, it's so interesting because when I learned about direct digestion, for me, I'm like, oh my gosh, everything that I've learned about myself is, is right here. I didn't know about it, but I have to eat during the day because if I eat at night, I can't digest. I have trouble sleeping. Mm. And I sometimes go outside to eat. I need to be in the sunlight. And it's, it's so fascinating. But uh yeah, going back to the birth time, I realized because I'm like asking, my parents don't know what time they were born. And I have a sister too who doesn't know. And it's not on birth certificates. Hopefully mm-hmm. they are now adding the birth time. But <laughs> yeah, see if you, because time, time really does matter and it, it does make a difference. But yeah, that that's one piece. And that's why um, my business is now Radiant by Design. I've evolved it from Radiant Health, where it's just functional medicine based into Radiant by Design because now I'm adding in this extra piece that can really, really help people just really understand who they are and really personalize the approaches to, and it's just, it's so much fun. I love it. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's super cool. I like that, that uh, shift there. Okay. So within, within that company, you are, you've created a course called Already Enough. So what is that about? Who is that for? Tell us a little bit about it. I yeah. like the title Already Enough because we yeah. all need to, we all need to believe that. Absolutely. So my journey into creating this course really started, actually my whole journey really started about, let's see, it started in 2016 when I was just experiencing so much anxiety and overwhelm. I was just stressed out every single day and this was before functional medicine. (laughs) And so, um, yeah, it got to a point where um, because I was experiencing it every day, I didn't know how to you know, handle my emotions. I would stuff everything down. And I remember like the anxiety and overwhelm and stressed out feeling I was feeling was because I was, you know, trying to please people, make everybody happy in my life. I was constantly worried about what people said. And, you know, I wanted to be accepted. I didn't want to be judged. And, you know, I also wanted to prove my worth because I didn't feel like I was good enough. And so I was doing all these things, you know, striving going after achievements. And, and I became a physician assistant because I thought that as a PA, I would actually get to help people. I love learning about the body and and medicine. And so I was a PA for about five, six years. And in 2016, I realized like, is this all there is? (laughs) I studied for so long. And then all of a sudden I'm like, is there all this, like, I, now what? And I realized I wasn't really helping people, especially to the extent and the capacity that I wanted to help people. And uh, not only that, I was experiencing a lot of my own health issues. You know, as, as you mentioned, the migraines, anxiety, a lot of bloating, constipation, GI issues, and then hormonal imbalances because I was also on birth control pills too um, for acne. And so when I came off, I experienced a lot of hormonal imbalance from that. And uh, so experiencing a lot of health issues at the time that I didn't think anything of it. You know, I, for the most part, just pushed through everything. Um, and I also was, I think it, it was a year into my marriage. Yeah. It was a year into my marriage with my husband, which was actually the most challenging year of our entire relationship, dating and being married that first year, because we didn't know how to communicate. And again, mm-hmm. I also just would step down my emotions until it would all come up. And then I would just have a mental breakdown. Like he would say one thing and I would have either a mental breakdown or we would get into an argument. And that kept happening over and over and over again. And I would Mm -hmm. come home and vent about, you know, stuff that happened at work because, again, I just, you know, constantly worried about different things and making sure I was doing the right thing. And (laughs) and we were just, uh, it was just a very stressful and overwhelming time for myself. And it got to the point where, because I would have these mental breakdowns or we would have a lot of arguments, my husband would constantly coach me through that. And it got to a point where he wasn't my husband anymore. He was my coach. And I remember this day very clearly in 2016, where we had this really difficult conversation. We were sitting on his old, ugly, leather-brown couch, which is pretty much all we had at the time. <laughs> you know, 
newly married in our, in our new six rubber. And he, um, I remember him looking at me with just like a lot of pain and sadness and unhappiness in his eyes when he said, I don't know how much longer I can keep doing this. And he was contemplating a divorce. And so when he said that, uh, like so many emotions <laughs> came over me and I held back tears as I, you know, as my body started trembling and I remember the first thoughts like, no, my, in my head, like, no, this cannot be happening. But like everything was just about to come to an end and, you know, and the thoughts like, what did I do? You know, what did I do? Or why can I make him happy? And, you know, what was wrong with me? I'm, I'm just not good enough for him. And all these thoughts, you know, were, were flooding in. But deep down inside, though, there was also this, this thought and this belief like divorce is not an option because in front of me was my soulmate. And the thought of losing him was more painful than what I was going through at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I am so grateful for that conversation because that conversation completely changed the trajectory of my life. And so after that point, I to learn a lot about like personal development and mindset work, went to Tony Robbins events and dove into listen to podcasts and listen to a bunch of books. So yeah, this course already enough has basically been in the making since 2000. 16 because for the first time I learned about my limiting belief I am not enough mm. I'm not good enough and that was what was driving everything driving you know the um the lack of self-confidence and and I even remember Kyleen like during that time I was worried he was going to leave me <laughs> because I never felt like I was good enough you know I thought like some girl some woman who was more beautiful more intelligent than me you know would he would leave me for her because I didn't have that confidence in myself because I never felt like I was good enough. And so it was just that, that belief that was driving everything, affecting my marriage, affecting my health and even my fulfillment in life and my career. And so once I uncovered that belief, then I set out to do the work to figure out, okay, how do I change this belief? Mm. <laughs> Cause it's a yeah. belief that, that gets rooted and, it, and we hold on to it and, for a very long time. And so uh, I think the biggest thing is like recognizing when we are experiencing certain emotions and, and certain challenges and things in our life mentally and physically and emotionally, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it all comes down to this belief. So that's why I created already enough. Like I basically took all the, the, the insights, the knowledge, all the things that I've learned and the tools that helped me not only to, you know, get rid of this belief and like create a new belief for myself, but also to calm my body down mm -hmm. because I realized I was for a very long time and that's why I experienced all the physical issues. So I had mm -hmm. to learn to also calm my body down and that's why I created Already Enough to teach women about all these different pieces and how they can do that. That's so cool. I think a lot of um, women that are, uh, that have been betrayed can relate to that story on some, with some aspect, because, um, I know for me, a lot of that was pulled up through the betrayal and, um, any insecurity or belief that I had prior to it was just like blown up exponentially after betrayal. And specifically with self-worth and identity, core identity beliefs and being, feeling like you're worthy or enough. Like it's so important to get, get to the place where you do believe that you are enough because that from, it's from that place that you can then make healthy decisions about, okay, this is somebody that I want to work through things with, or, or you have enough self-worth and confidence at that point because you've processed it that you know you will be okay on your own if that's the, the healthy choice for you too. So it really doesn't matter either direction. It like the inner work is kind of what leads you to be able to make those decisions, improve relationships if that's the direction it needs to go or make difficult choices if that's the direction it needs to go. So I think, yeah. I think no matter where they're coming from, um, women that are watching this can relate to, to that aspect of your story. And um, I think we've all been in that place where we um, really feel afraid that, um, you know, someone's going to reject us or abandon us or leave us or, um, I've, I've never had a fear of abandonment. <laughs> That's not a thing for me. 
oh, that's like the story of my life. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that's yeah. really cool. I, I love that um, you took kind of your experience and created this whole this whole um, course for that. So let's um, let's talk about affirmations because um, I know how uh, I teach my clients and I'm really curious to see, I, I have a feeling it's pretty similar, but um, uh, I'm, I know a lot of people kind of hate them and some people love them, right? And I think that's because there's an effective way to do it and there's a way that your brain will just like totally reject it, right? So, um, so how do you talk about affirmations? Why are they important and how can we do them well? Yeah. So when I was doing this work, I was working with a, a mindset mentor. And of course, she would have us state these affirmations. Like, and of course, one of my beliefs not was not only was I am not enough or I'm not good enough, but I'm not worthy. And so she would have me state, I am worthy and valuable. And of course, I would state that over and over and over again. But when we state affirmations, I am enough, I am worthy. Like deep down inside, we don't believe that. And that's because it's not aligned with our core beliefs. And that's what I talked about in our already enough, like identifying what are these core limiting beliefs? Because if you're stating an affirmation that does not connect with that core belief, yeah, your subconscious mind is going to repel that. And so that's why those affirmations don't work. And you see it on the internet, you know, like how do I feel good enough or whatever, you know, you can um, do a Google search and they'll all say, yeah, all these affirmations, I am enough, I am worthy, but you know, the subconscious mind just, it, it, it doesn't connect with that. And so what I learned is that we have to, when we, I love affirmations and I love mantras, they can be powerful, but it's how do we say them in the way that our subconscious mind actually believes it? Well, one, we have to recognize what are those core limiting beliefs? And then two, recognize those beliefs are not the truth. And right. when we can understand that those beliefs are not the truth, then we zoom in and focus on what well, what is the truth. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I know that like I am just this radiant light. And so I started focusing on this this mantra or this affirmation that I am a magnetic. <laughs> I am a magnetic light that, um, what was it? Cause I, it was like, oh, I radiate magnetic energy of love and light. That's oh, I like that. I, that's who I am. Mm-hmm. And so my subconscious mind resonated more with that. Cause yeah, when I am this magnetic light of love, you know, I feel worthy and I feel enough. So what but, is, what is your human design? I'm a projector. I'm a projector. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Cool, cool. So yeah. So I, have I was this curious with that affirmation resonating with you. Yeah. Yeah. So I have this very penetrating aura. Yeah. I have this aura that a lot of people can feel. Um, granted, not everybody likes my penetrating aura. So which is, which is okay. And I've come to realize not everyone is, um, is ready for, for what I, what I can bring to the table, you know, cause I can see things from a different perspective and I can really yeah. connect deeply with each person, but not everybody is ready for that. And that's okay. But, but yeah, as a, as a projector, you know, I, I feel, I feel, I have this energy that radiates out and, uh, and I can, um, and it really helps me to connect. Uh, cause I have also because of the splenic part, very, very intuitive. So because that energy radiates out, I'm very intuitive. I can feel into other people and be able to see what's going on. Like, for example, um, I had a client recently, I had a feeling that something was happening in her world. And so sure enough, when I looked at her little, I have everybody, everybody fill out what's called a consult clarifier. So I am prepared to go over some things in our sessions. She's like, yeah, I, I just, I haven't been doing the work. So now I'm like, okay, reaching out like, Hey, what's going on? Let's let, I want to support you through this. But I had a feeling before I even looked at her, (laughs) like something's been going on and she hasn't communicated with me. So I have this intuition, but, um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, so going back to the uh, affirmations, it's yeah. Creating an affirmation, one that you can connect and resonate with that you believe that is true for you instead of just saying something very simple and plain and basic like I am worthy enough because obviously, you know, our subconscious mind doesn't connect to that. 
Yeah. So give, give us an example of something that would be believable that's in between I am unworthy and I am worthy. Yeah. So, um, well, it really depends on each, each person. So, yeah. so for you, Kyleen, um, I would say what, what actually makes you like, what, what makes you feel worthy? Say it may not necessarily be a relationship, but like mm. when I go outside and I, yeah, feel the sun on my skin, I feel worthy. Mm. Mm-hmm. So what would that look like for you? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. You're going to therapize me here. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I love like, okay, so going into my human design, my profile is like, my thing is to inform and Uh, I'm a one, I'm a one three. So I constantly like to learn. So the combination of those, which is great because that's what I do. I'm constantly learning. And then I'm constantly sharing the information that I learn. mm -hmm. Those things make me feel really good. If I can like take something that I learn, utilize it and translate it for other people, like I feel amazing. Awesome. What's your, what's your, are you a manifester or manifesting generator? Oh, manifester. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause manifestors love to inform. So yeah, yep. you feel worthy when you learn. I feel worthy when I learn something and can share it with the world. How does that oh, feel? I like, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, mm, exactly. That's cool. now, now we're getting even more specific. Cause that's another thing. I am enough. I am worthy. That's so general. It's like, yeah. okay. But now, yeah, based off of your design, you love to inform, and that's when you feel worthy, when you feel good. Now we can combine those two and make a really powerful affirmation that now your subconscious mind is like, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> that's so fascinating. Um, I also learned, like, the throat gates, like, think the way you um, will share things with, like, so if I'm, if I'm an educator, if I'm an informer, um, if I'm a teacher – using specific language is going to, first of all, feel better for me than using um, maybe maybe a totally different phrase. And then also because I feel super comfortable with it, my energy sharing it is going to be received better. I I find this so fascinating (laughs) and so accurate. It's unbelievable. It just is so cool to learn about people. Um, This is so cool. So let's talk about these beliefs that are underneath, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we can create affirmations, but we still need to actually address the belief itself because it, because I love what you said specifically that these are lies that we believe. These are not truth, right? Which is why we want to change them. We know that we are worthy. We know that we are enough. We know that we are valuable and have value to offer offer to the world. And like consciously, even even if like 99% of you is resisting that and just really is sucked into the lie that you suck, right? Um, there's a part of you that knows that that's not true. There's a part of you that knows you have capability, that you are strong and beautiful and have potential and opportunities in life, right? So we know that that's not true. So how, like, where do they come from and how do we kind of deal with these? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the beliefs, the common beliefs that I've uncovered, well, what I've realized is that we have our, like, our personal beliefs, beliefs, which I call them our superficial beliefs. So Mm -hmm. it's simple beliefs that we've learned from like our parents and culture and society. Like for example, someone will believe like I have to work out six to seven times a week to stay healthy (laughs) and look good. Another person will be like, well, I just need to work out three times a week and I can still maintain my health and look good, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a personal, a very superficial belief, you know, those beliefs can be, can be tweaked, can be changed, you know, depending on what we learn from our culture and society and parents. But then we have what's called the deep core beliefs, which are a lot deeper than that. And what I've come to discover is that there are three main core beliefs that people will have. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy or I'm not loved. Now, most people can have uh, one or multiple. Like for me, I definitely believed I was not good enough and I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the belief I'm not loved because growing up, I received love from my parents and from the people around me. So that wasn't a belief, but other people might have that belief. So when I uh, go through already enough live with my clients, what I do is I actually muscle test them to see what beliefs come up because muscle tests, um, happen to your subconscious mind and they don't lie. (laughs) 
Yes, I love that. That's so cool. Well, just in case anybody hasn't heard about what muscle, I love this, by the way. Um, yeah. I use it and I've had it done on me and um, I just think it's, I do it to myself and um, it's just super cool. So talk just very quickly. What is that? Yeah. So there's different types of muscle testing you can do. You can have someone like press your arm and when it's strong, it means that's that belief is true. But if your arm's a little weak, that means the belief is not true or it's, it's negative, you know, or it's a no. So yes, yes, strong, um, no, very weak. Uh, but people can also do it through like doing like this or with your, mm -hmm. with your finger. What I would have my clients do is stand up because <laughs> I feel like sometimes it can be a little subjective when, when you're moving the arm. But if you have somebody stand up, what I do is I have them zip up their energy. So from feet all the way up to their head and make sure they're hydrated too, because that's key. And then I calibrate them. And when I calibrate them, I ask them, you know, questions like, or not questions, but have them state like gender, for example, if they identify with woman, I'm a woman and they either lean forward for yes or back for no, or I'm a man, lean forward for yes, lean uh, back for no, state their name. I am so-and-so I am, you know, and so they should say yes, like I'm <laughs> forward. And then I'll have them say somebody else's name. Like I'll say my husband's name and I lean back. So once you are calibrated, so yes to your gender, yes to your name, no to someone else, then you know you're good. And then you can um, say the belief, I am enough. And when you state this belief, then you will see if your body leans forward or back. Mm. You don't want to say, you don't want to test the belief, I am not enough, because subconscious mind doesn't understand what not is. So yeah. You never want to say, I'm not or I don't. You always want to state the positive, like, I am this. Mm -hmm. So I am enough, I am worthy, I am loved, and see yes or no. And uh, that's a really quick, easy way to determine. But you have to be calibrated because if you find that if you, you know, aren't hydrated, you may not lean. I've had some clients kind of like hobble around. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, go drink some more water. <laughs> Let's do yeah. it again. And sometimes I have to have them do that a couple times because believe it or not, we're not as hydrated as we think. <laughs> Speaking of hydration. Speaking yeah. Of, yeah, it's very important. <laughs> No, so, I love yeah. this form. That's, that's what I do. And I will hold like a supplement up to my body yeah. and just ask my body, like, is this good for me? And then I'll lean into it or lean away. Yeah. Um, it's really fascinating. Go to the grocery store and do it sometime. Pick up some different things. Mm. Um, the other day I had my dad do it. Um, I had him put um, the Bible in his lap because I knew he'd have a strong yes to that. <laughs> I was like, this, I had him do this one and then I had to do it with some, something else to kind of test that. it and see. Yeah, really just so interesting. I so cool. That. Yeah, so that's what I, I, I when the, when we go live, I'll muscle test. But other than that, you can do it on your own, or you can just feel into your body. When you say I am not, or when you say I am enough, do you like? Does your cells vibrate? Does it feel good, or and make you feel strong? That's the key. Or when you say I am enough, does it like feel very heavy? Does your body feel weak? Kind of like the mm -hmm. when you say that. So when mm -hmm. you state these things, you can feel it. Your body oh, yeah. responds to our words and the things that we say. So that's another way to test those beliefs too. So once you kind of figure out what the core beliefs are for someone that they're struggling with, and obviously when we have these core beliefs, they're going to act as walls for us to accomplish. Yeah. I mean, anything we want to accomplish, right? If we don't believe we're, I, I really, it's so cliche. Mm -hmm. I, and I like hate this. I need to find another way to say this, but it, it really is that if you believe it, you can achieve it. And like, so it, there really is the opposite is also true. When you don't believe that you can accomplish something, you won't. Because if you don't think, uh, like on all levels, consciously and subconsciously, that something yeah. is attainable, you will never take the steps to do it because your your awareness is not bringing that in at that point. If your filter is not, like doesn't have that in your sense of reality, then you're not going to pull in the ways to accomplish that. So anytime we hold these beliefs and we are able to identify what they are, it's obviously going to be really important to change them and shift them. So because we're not getting, if we're, if we're in the point in our lives where we are doing the work to identify these, obviously we're feeling stuck in some way, right? Yes. We're not moving the direction that we want. Um, so if, if that is the case, then what do we do about it? Yeah, that is a well, great Well, doing already enough. <laughs> yeah. Already enough, like yep. I dive deep. I dive deep yep. talking about subconscious mind and these beliefs, but also giving giving my clients the tools. But I'm glad that you said that because another thing that I encourage, especially when working with um, women and their health too, optimizing their health, what I realize is that 
someone can believe they're healthy, but if they don't believe they can heal, that contradicts. So that that's a really good point what you made. If you believe you can heal, but you don't, or you, you believe you're healthy, but don't believe you can heal, and you're not getting results, it's like, well, that's a big problem. You gotta believe you can heal first, <laughs> you know? And so once we identify these limiting beliefs, I mean, definitely first is, is recognizing, you know, the, what is the truth and, you know, creating these, uh, you know, powerful like affirmations and mantras that are more specific to you and who you are can be really helpful. But, um, one thing that I realized has been really powerful for myself and with my clients is just shifting our perspective because a lot of times these beliefs, they're developed in childhood. So like something happened as a child, which made you believe like, I'm not good enough in that moment, or I'm not worthy. Yeah. Say you wanted a toy and you didn't get the toy that you wanted for Christmas and your best friend did. And so you think, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy. And the more of them happen in your life would just, you know, reinforce this belief. And now you have been carrying this belief for like 20, 30, 40 years. And so what we want to do is to start looking at the perspective. So when something happens in your life, you know, and you're like triggered or you react, you know, or you're resisting something, tune in and say, okay, why? Why am I triggered right now? Why am I resisting? Because most of the time it's linked to that core belief. And then when you realize, oh, I'm triggered because right now I feel like I'm good enough. Well, is this true? No, it's, it's, it's not true. <laughs> and to recognize like, okay, what, what is the perspective I'm seeing this, you know, because we're always looking at things that are happening in our world around us through a certain lens and that's called perspective. And so we only look through one certain lens, but there's so many different types and, and different variations of perspectives that we can have and take on. So if we can actually flip the lens a little bit and look at things from a different perspective, that can also help us to shift our belief and shift our state. So mm -hmm. perceptions have been so, so powerful because uh, I realized anything that was happening in my life, I perceived as usually a bad thing. It was like a bad or negative thing and recognizing like perceptions are really based off the meaning we give things, which are created from our thoughts and our beliefs. And so we can recognize um, a question I started asking was, what is the meaning I'm giving this? <laughs> yeah, my, my, my old therapist used to say, that's a story you're telling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. We tell ourselves stories all the time. So then when I started, when I would get, you know, triggered or I was resisting, then I'm like, oh yeah, what meaning am I giving this? Or am I creating a story? And is this true? Because yeah, most of the time we don't know if it is true. And um, so right there can help us to really shift that perspective. And then we can actually see things and recognize, yeah, that belief is not true. And then we can step into and embody the belief that is true for us. So yeah, going back to remembering, yeah, I'm this yeah magnetic <laughs> energy, you know, radiating light and love. And, uh, and it's a practice. It does take time. It doesn't happen overnight, sure. but you know, I think the first step is awareness, being aware of, you know, our thoughts and our beliefs. Mm -hmm. And when we are triggered or we're reacting or, you know, feeling resistance, asking ourselves like one, you know, what belief is this, what belief is coming up? And then what is the story? What is the meaning we're giving it? And then from there we can shift that perspective. I love it. Let's talk about the subconscious mind. Yeah. So I think we're consciously aware of a lot of things. Uh, and But the reality is our subconscious is kind of what rules all of our behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so if we're ignoring our subconscious or we don't understand it, then we're going to keep doing the things that we don't want to do forever. <laughs> but if we want a different outcome in life, I think it's crucial to begin focusing on the subconscious so that it aligns with our conscious goals. Yeah, absolutely. The subconscious is everything because our mind is made up of 95% of subconscious mind. 5% is conscious. And so, but I feel like we, I feel like on a day-to-day -day basis, we assume that it's the opposite. Right. Exactly. Right. Like we yeah. think that consciously we're ruling the, our world, like, and that's 95% of it. And that's how we behave. So that, 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 like that alone is, should be mind blowing. I feel like. 
Yeah. And it's true. Like we think we are consciously aware of a lot of things that are happening, but if you think about it, our subconscious mind, I call them layers. We have different layers within our subconscious mind. So the first layer is obviously our thoughts. So anytime we have a thought, we're constantly thinking, we think about 70,000 thoughts per day. And unfortunately, 80% of those are negative. And that's because we've been thinking and have wired our minds to think the same thought over and over and over again. Um, so that's the first layer. Then the, the second layer is the beliefs, which we've been talking about. Then the third layer is those perceptions that we started to create. So the meaning and the stories that we mm -hmm. get things. And then the, the fourth layer is um, our memories, because now we're storing things that happened in our past, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. things that happen. So we got to store it to make sure either it doesn't happen again or like, oh, wow, I love that experience. Like, let me just think back to that moment on the beach when I felt extreme bliss, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah. First time my husband said I love you was on the beach. So, yeah, so I like to think back at that. It's a good memory. Yeah, we have really good memories and we yeah. all have bad memories, but the bad memories yeah. are there to serve us, to protect us and keep us safe. And then the fifth layer is the um, conditioning or the patterns, because when things happen over and over and over again, we create a pattern. And that's where most of us are operating <laughs> our our day to day life, because mm -hmm. you think about it. You know, everything that we do, we have habits that we created, which is the conditioning and the patterns. So when you wake up, you go and, you know, to the bathroom, you go pee, and then you brush your teeth, then either you shower or you go put the coffee pot on. Like everything that you do in your, your morning routine, that's an automatic pattern. That's a conditioning that we do. When you go and drive, you find yourself like daydreaming, and all of a sudden you get to where you're going, you're like, whoa, I don't remember getting here. Yes, totally. <laughs> You're in your subconscious mind. So when we ride a bike, you know, all these things, these habits and patterns we created, they're all these subconscious programs and patterns. So we don't have to use a lot of energy to do them. That's mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. we're operating from our subconscious mind at yeah, 95% of the time and not really consciously aware. So yeah. those are those are layers and I and I love talking about it because it's important to be aware of these different pieces so that way we can take the subconscious and be consciously aware, especially of the thoughts, the beliefs, you know, the, the perceptions and the automatic programs and conditionings. Cause then once we're aware of these things, especially if they're negative, they're not serving us. Now we can start to, to make change because if you weren't aware of it before, you can't make the change. And like you said, you keep doing the same things over and over again. <laughs> right. And I typically find that when we do become aware of them, it's because when these, when these patterns or habits or beliefs were created, they were always created in the moment to serve us in some way. They, they were trying to help us or protect us or serve us or, or, or get us out of a situation or whatever it is, right? They, they always have a positive reason that they showed up because our subconscious is on our side. Um, yes. And by the time that we're becoming aware or frustrated with them, that pattern or that belief that's underlying it is no longer serving us because we're trying to get into a new level of life. We're trying to experience growth or we're frustrated where we are. And that, that literally means that, okay, now we're going to become aware of these because they're not benefiting us in the way we want to anymore. And it's at that point that we become aware that it's like, okay, we need to change this. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then, and I realized like the reason why I was anxious and stressed out all the time, because I was just, I was worried. I was worried I wouldn't be good enough and worried about what people thought of me. And once I started, you know, looking at these different layers and, and pulling things up and, and shifting my belief, shifting my perspective, changing, because that's really the key. What you want to do is you want to start rewiring your brain with new yeah. thoughts and beliefs and also recondition the body, break those old patterns which yeah. is not always easy, but once you can start to break those patterns, you got to recognize what the patterns are, but then you uh, start to break those patterns. And I walk my clients how to do that and already enough, but when you can recondition your body and calm it back down, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's a game changer. Now you, you shift out of that anxious, overwhelmed state into a very calm state. And then like, when you state your, 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 your truth about who you are, you can mm -hmm. actually believe that. And that's where you finally can step into and embody. I am enough. I am worthy. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I'm glad a couple of times that you said like, this is not an overnight thing because yeah. we, we can both process the limiting belief and, and we can create the new identity and we can do all this and we have to practice it because 
it's one thing to kind of shift that, but when you have a deeply ingrained um, a thought pattern or habit um, that has been around for 20 years of your life or longer in, in many cases, um, just shifting that identity uh, is, is one thing and that's a really, really important thing, but then you actually have to take action on it. And let me tell you from personal experience that taking action on it and practicing it is nerve wracking. So this process I think requires a lot of courage and bravery because you are very intentionally stepping into a new identity that even though you've switched your thinking process on it is going to feel very difficult because it's not something you've done before. And I recently um, was practicing this myself. I um, was working on some limiting beliefs of I have a fear of being seen or I did have a fear of being seen. And so we were working on that. And uh, this was in my level two training uh, a couple weeks ago. And um, it was really powerful. We were resourcing mm -hmm. my subconscious and my inner child and all this kind of stuff. It was very cool and really, really helped. And then mm -hmm. I came home and immediately had the opportunity to either practice this and step into it or not. And I chose to step into it and to practice it. And it felt really scary in a lot of ways and then also really, really good. And in one specific moment where I had the opportunity to practice this, it was a very vulnerable thing and mm -hmm. it released a lot out of my body as I stepped into this. And so I did cry. I did release a lot of emotion. I felt that going through my body. Um, and by the time I was done with it, I was so proud of myself because I was like, that was a big deal. So it is, it can be really scary. I think, um, you know, it's one thing to say like, Hey, we can like release these limiting beliefs. Like we're excited about this because we've experienced it. And um, we also know that it is very nerve wracking. It does require courage. It does require strength to do this. Um, that's why we encourage you to work with practitioners that can help you through it so that you're not alone and so that you take it one step at a time, um, but that you can kind of have that clear vision and that clear goal so that you can take those baby steps to, to consistently move towards that as you go through this process. So speaking of that, how do people find you and connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram. Actually, I'm, I'm now starting to show up on TikTok too. So both oh, platforms. <laughs> how exciting. At, at the Kate Vasquez and it's Vasquez with a, with double Z. So V-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z. -E and um, you can also find me online. It's yourradianthealth.com. But in the next month or so, it's switching over to radiantbydesign.com which I'm so excited about, but um, that's awesome. yeah, that's where you can find me there. Um, also, I, you can, um, I have a link for Art Enough because what I wanted to do is offer a secret pre-sale because I haven't launched it to the public yet, but I wanted to offer a secret pre-sale to your group, Kylie, because Fantastic. you were yeah, a great friend of mine. And um, yeah, I love the work that you do. And I wanted to gift your community with a, a, a discounted rate for this course to sign up uh, in the next 48 hours. So I have a link for, for everyone that they can use. Um, it resonates with you and it's something you want to dive into. I'm still working on the course. It's in the editing process. I'm almost done, but it will be launching um, next, next month. So, uh, yeah, once I get all the pieces together, I'm going to let everyone know. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to take advantage of the, the pre-sell, the secret pre-sell. Um, cause yeah, once I launch it live, it's going to go up. So I have the link and, um, yeah, if anyone's interested, you can definitely take advantage of that. Yay. That's amazing. I'll make sure that that when, as soon as I post this, I'll put the link in. Yeah. Um, to make sure you, easy access over the next two days. That's super cool. Thank you for doing that. That's great. Absolutely. You're welcome. Yay. But, uh, yeah, other than that, if you also have questions, um, yeah, just, just message me. Message me on Instagram. I'm very active there so you can reach out. Awesome. Thank you, Kate. I'm so glad that we had this conversation. It was absolutely fantastic. Thank you for sharing your gifts and your experiences and um, your program already enough. I can't wait to put that link in the comments here for everybody to check out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kylene. You're awesome. And I love the work that you're doing. And I hope everyone um, yeah, can take a little something away from our conversation today. I think so. It was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. It's always good. <laughs> it's always good with you, Kylene. Thank <laughs> you.